Hey guys, it's Haley, and welcome to another bookish video. Today I am back with another one of my 2023 superlative videos. I love filming these and today we are talking about my most surprising reads of this year. I already posted my most disappointing reads of 2023 and this is going to kind of be the opposite of that. This means surprised in a good way. I'm going to be raving about the top 12 books in this video that I was completely completely surprised by. It totally shocked me. I didn't expect it to be as good as it was, but some of these are new favorites. Some of these are just things that maybe I didn't think would hit for me and they ended up really working. You can probably guess if you've been around for the resurgence of my fantasy era, some of the things that are going to be on this list. But of course, we also have a lot of thriller, a lot of horror, maybe a romance or two. I don't know. Stay tuned to find out. And before we get into the books, I do want to mention if you want the hoodie that I'm wearing, this is part of my merch collection, so you can get it down below if you are wanting a Christmas gift for someone who is a horror and smut reader, or for yourself if you are a horror or smut reader. I have tees that you can crop with this on it that are so fucking cute. I've seen some of y'all wear like extra smalls cropped, and I'm like, please. I need to do that because y'all are so fucking cute. There's sweatshirts and there's big t-shirts and there's hoodies. The hoodie is my favorite. All of my Patreon movie nights, I wear this hoodie and it is so comfy and so pink and cute. So if you like horror and smuts, join me and wear the horror and smut tee. Also, I just have to mention my mother is a high school teacher and she wears this to school. And I think that is the coolest thing ever. Like that is such... A cool thing. Imagine walking into your high school classroom just like seeing your pre-cal teacher wearing this. Like she's awesome. So shop the merch. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year to you. Spend that Christmas money. Now let's go ahead and get into my most surprising books of 2023. Let's start out with one of my first reads of 2023 and we're talking about baby teeth. Baby Teeth by Zoya Stage. Why did everybody tell me this book sucked? So many people gave this a negative review. So my expectations were honestly in the toilet for this thriller. Going in, I was like, okay, this is gonna suck. Everybody hates this book. What's going on? Why am I even picking this up? But I was curious about this author. I really wanted to do a taste test for a couple of her books. So I ended up featuring this one in that vlog and I loved it. I was sucked in from the first page. I could not put it down. Y'all know I love a creepy child thriller. I just made an entire video talking about all of my favorite creepy child horror and thriller books and this one was on there because this is very rare. In this book we actually get the perspective of the child wreaking havoc on the family. We are following this mom and daughter and they are just in this like contention. The daughter's job seemingly is to make her mother's life a living hell and the mother is grappling with really feeling this deep resentment for her own child. It feels like such a moral dilemma and you kind of catch yourself as the reader thinking horrible things about a kid and then feeling like oh my god what if the mom is just like crazy and abusive and I'm siding with the crazy abusive mom and this is just like a poor little traumatized kid. I love books with ethical dilemmas. I love books that are morally gray. I don't know why all the negative reviews exist, but they definitely lowered my expectations. So when I went into this and absolutely loved it, I was so shocked. But of course it was happily surprised because I ended up giving this book 4.5 out of 5 stars. Next up, I want to talk about a new release thriller from this year, and that is Everyone Here is Lying by Sherry Lapina. Sherry Lapina is known to go either way 
for me. I have really not liked a lot of her books, but I've also really liked a few of them. I never really know how Sherry Lapina books are gonna go, and this one sounded so basic when I went into it that I really didn't expect much from it at all. We are following this family, really this neighborhood where this family lives, and a little daughter in the family comes home early from school. Her dad runs into her, and then later on in the day, nobody knows where she is. Is. She's just gone completely missing out of thin air. Of course, the dad was the last to see her, but he's not the only suspicious character around. There are a lot of people that have means and motive in the neighborhood. So we are kind of following door to door to door, seeing what happened to this kid. I love a missing kid mystery. And this just seemed like that kind of basic structure. So I wasn't expecting massive things from this book, but it really surprised me how much I loved it. I read it so fast in a matter of hours because I had to know what was going on. There was so much juicy, salacious drama. And then the turn that it took at the end, I could have never predicted. And it completely surprised me how much I loved it. There was just this sinister air at the end that I could not get enough of. Honestly, I would love a sequel to this book. It includes a trope that I love so, 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 so much, but I don't want to say it because it's such a spoiler. But yeah, if you were thinking that this is just another basic thriller, you are wrong. This was a massive standout from the 2023 new release thrillers that I read. Next up, we have something <laughs> completely unexpected. Like, I don't think of all the books that you're possibly thinking that I could talk about right now, I don't think anyone could ever predict that I would be talking about this. Uh, this is so weird. Y'all, I have no clue. I'm like really keeping you in suspense right now. But this is, after all, my most surprising book. So this is kind of on brand. Ice Planet Barbarians by Ruby Dixon. The Blue Alien Smut Book? Yeah. I went into this fully thinking, I'm just gonna have a laugh. Okay, I'm just really gonna have a laugh. This is gonna be so ridiculous. It's gonna be so stupid. I'm sad. The way I was sad. Okay, I sat down and I listened. And Ruby Dixon had a lot to say and I ate it right up. I would have never thought that I would be into this kind of thing. I'm not one for creatures outside of a horror context, but... I don't know. Something about it worked for me. Also, I heard that there were a lot of edits done uh, from the original version to the traditionally published version. And I will say I do think that I benefited from that. I think if I would have read the original indie published version, I wouldn't have liked it as much. But this really shocked me the way that I liked it. We are literally just following a girl who's kidnapped by aliens and then she falls in love with an alien on another planet and they have like wild sex every other chapter. Um, yeah, there's not much to say other than I did not think that I would vibe with this. I literally was gonna read it as a joke and then it got a little too real. Like I really enjoyed this book, what the hell? And I probably will continue the series every once in a while, like when I need just a good little hit of no thoughts, head empty smut. I'm gonna turn to Miss Ruby because this was kind of good. Also, like, it had me thinking about things. Okay, I'm intrigued about fur and ridges anyway. The next book I think everyone could probably predict was gonna be on here because it was the shocker of 2023. This is one of my best books of the year, so I'm kind of spoiling a little bit of my best books of the year video. I just had to talk about it in this video as well because I picked it up thinking I was gonna make a rant review on it. I picked it up thinking it was gonna be a one star. I picked it up really just thinking I was gonna hate it. And it's one of my best books of the year. And that is Dead Inside by Chandler Morrison. Okay, everyone knows I am the misogyny and extreme horror hater. I think I'm the poster child for that. I don't think we need to talk about that any fucking more. So I had heard horrible things about this book that is just horribly disrespectful to women and horribly problematic. And I went in thinking, okay, let me eat up another extreme horror rat today. Um, and then I was very surprised and shocked to learn that this is satire. 
And I don't know what y'all are doing out here. If you didn't read this as satire, the first pass, I don't know what you were on. I don't know how you missed that, but it is masterfully done satire and some of the best commentary on the extreme horror genre that I think is so needed and this coming from a man and not just like being another woman in the genre being like hey it fucking sucks here with the misogyny yeah it sucks it's just so refreshing to see a man do that and I know um Chandler Morrison does not identify with the extreme horror community at all he um actually seems like he really doesn't like it at all <laughs> from the conversations that I've had with him and I just really appreciate him using his literary voice to have some kind of opinion and commentary on the extreme horror space. Uh, if you don't know anything about this book, it, it's definitely hard to read. Okay, just because it's satire doesn't mean that it's any less extreme. It is extreme horror. It is extremely horrifying, gratuitous violence, extremely graphic, but it's done in a way that is light, almost because of the way that it's written and it's so hard to describe but like it's a feeling that you get and i mm, we're getting into territory now i have talked about the feeling that you get when you read disturbing content there's some where it just it's in the pit of your stomach you know that it's not coming from a good place it, it's the feeling of when you're walking down the street and there's a guy behind you walking and you know that he's going to do you harm versus the feeling of a guy walking behind you and you're not having that pit in your stomach. That was how I felt when I read Dead Inside because I was reading the same level of violence that I've read from other extreme horror content, but I didn't get that creepy twisty feeling because I knew that the voice saying these words was on my side. And that was so shocking. Like I fully, I cannot impress upon you enough. I fully thought that I was gonna be the biggest hater of this book and I loved it. I think it's masterfully done. It's so funny. The character development is real. I have theories about this book which I've spoken about with the author and he's a low-key validated and I'm like I feel so good here. I love it here. <laughs> Could not have predicted this but I'm happy that it happens and I recommend it for the right audience. Uh, beware, don't just go into this book but if you're hearing what I'm saying and you're wanting that kind of commentary in your life, pick it up. We have to address the elephant in the room, okay? And that elephant in this room that's been here for a couple months now is fantasy. What the hell? I always said since I first started my channel, I will never read these hyped up fantasy books. It's not going to happen. I don't know. I don't know what it was. I think it was that the 2023 new release thrillers that were coming out were all so fucking horrible and the horror genre is so fucking unwelcoming that I was just like, I need something fucking else. Um, and now I've landed in the fantasy genre, which I never thought that I would, but it's so fun and so welcoming and so nice. Shocker of the year, not on my 2023 bingo card. I loved Akamaf. A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Maas. Everybody told me after I read Akatar like three years ago, Haley, pick up the second one. You're gonna love the second one. I know you were just lukewarm on the first one. You're gonna love the second one. And y'all were all right. Like y'all ate me up. You read me for filth. You were so correct. I gave this four stars. What the hell is going on that Haley is giving a fantasy book four stars? I don't know, but it happened. I want to be in this found family. I want to be Nesta. I want to hang out with Reese. I want to steal Feyre's man. I want to be Nesta and I shit myself with Reese. How about that? How about that? Did you think that you would ever hear me saying these words? Did you think this lore would ever come out of my mouth? Yeah, me neither. It is such a happy surprise that I basically unlocked a whole other genre that I can dive into in 2024, and I'm so excited to do that. Next up, we have an arc that I actually read recently, and that is The Heiress by Rachel Hawkins. I kind of go into Rachel Hawkins thrillers with low expectations because I've never really fully enjoyed any of her books. I don't know, that sounds kind of harsh to say, but her thrillers are just kind of like popcorn, throwaway, no thoughts, head empty kind of reads for me until we got to this one. 
This one comes out in 2024, but I just read it last month and I have to say it's one of the most fantastic thrillers that I read this year. I feel so bad that I'm talking about it so much and y'all can't get your hands on it yet, but as soon as it's out, you have to run and get it. It is so good. We are following this guy and he is a part of this famous family. He was actually adopted into this like very wealthy, iconic family in the South. And now uh, the matriarch of his family, his adoptive mother has passed away and he has all of these millions and millions and millions of dollars that she has left to him. She cut every other family member out of the will and it's just him. So he goes back with his new wife to see what's going on with all this money. He really doesn't want anything to do with it because his family is like just dirty drama and he hates them, but his wife kind of convinces him to look into those millions of dollars because she wants the cash, she wants the coin, which I get that queen. And when they show up, the family secrets go wild. There's so much drama. It turns into like a Knives Out-esque murder mystery as family members start dropping dead. In alternating chapters throughout the book, we are reading from his adoptive mother's like journal entries and she reads like Evelyn Hugo. Those diary entries were so intriguing and really kept me reading because I was just enamored with this character of the heiress. She is iconic. She has like Evelyn Hugo status in my mind. I loved learning about her. The character development is all tends across the board. The atmosphere tends across the board, the twists, the pacing. Everything in this book was so phenomenal. I loved it so much and I never would have expected that from Rachel Hawkins, but now she is firmly on my radar. Now that I know she can do this, I didn't expect it, but I'm glad that she's here. Next up, we have something that is, again, just like totally out of my comfort zone genre-wise, and that is Spy X Family by Tatsuya Endo. I have never read manga before in my life. I read this one for a booktuber taste test. So many booktubers love this little manga series. Actually, I feel like so many booktubers got into manga this past year, and I'm not like super into it, but I was surprised how much I really enjoyed the one that I read. This is following a secret agent. He's like a spy. And for his next mission, he has to have this undercover family to go in and like bust these bad guys. So we are putting together this little fake family, but over the course of the book, they end up having, of course, real feelings for each other. And like, it's like a lovey, cutesy, funny, found family situation. But there's also exciting like spy antics and murder because his like fake wife is an assassin and she's awesome. And their little daughter is like little telepathy, like Carrie-esque kind of girl. She is so cool. The whole family's so cool. It's so heartwarming, so adorable. I cannot wait to read the rest of this series. Now, when I say Haley, me, and I say Natasha Preston, I'm sure you don't think of us getting along and being the best of pals, do you? Well, I have the shocker of the century for you. I feel like I keep saying that phrase, but like all these books are so surprising. It's almost like I'm doing my most surprising books of 2023. Y'all, I ate this shit up. Okay, Natasha. Natasha, I have been waiting for you, Miss Queen. I have been waiting on you to arrive, and she has arrived with this one. I think I've given every single other book of the past five years that this woman has come out with one and two stars. This one, though, four. Sorry, it's so good. Wait, it's so good. There's always just something a little bit off about Natasha Preston. So of course the marketing for this book was all fucking wrong. Like her one like really iconic book, the marketing just like is so fucked up. You see this, the haunting, what are you thinking? Oh, it's paranormal. Okay, it's giving haunted house. It's giving ghost. No, no. This is a Halloween serial killer YA thriller. And it is so good. The atmosphere is iconic. Okay, the atmosphere is like everything you could ever want for October. The teens in this book that are solving copycat murders do all these like fun Halloween coded activities. This is the most Halloween atmosphere book I've read. It was so fun, so fast paced, so easy to read. I read it in one night. I read it on Halloween night and it was so fun. The main character of this book, her 
ex-boyfriend's dad was a serial killer and now someone is copying his kills and she's like who is it is it my ex who i'm still in love with is it one of my friends fucking with me and fucking with my ex what's going on here didn't predict it great atmosphere great characters loved it natasha do more of this let's talk about another extreme horror book and i feel like extreme horror doesn't fucking shock me anymore like these boys cannot do anything that catches me off guard anymore i've seen it all i've read it all and three quarters of it is shit but samantha kolesnik leave it to a woman samantha miss samantha ate it up with waif okay i the only way that I could find this book to read it was on Audible. So if you can get your hands on it there, please do. This book is insane. The body horror is off the charts crazy. And it takes a turn, I would say like 60% of the way through, that my, my brain, my brain was like having trouble comprehending. It was so good. Okay, the commentary was commentarying. It had meaning. It was also exciting and disturbing. Oh my God, this is some of the most effective horror. I think Samantha Kolesnik is so, so wickedly talented. I would love to read more from her. I've read the two books that she has out. I want more. I need more. She's so good. In Waif, we are following this woman who at first glance, when we first meet her, just kind of seems like this weak, battered woman trapped in a really horrible situation. Her husband just seems like a piece of shit who torments her. But she starts getting into his head and kind of like playing on his insecurities. So he is like, what can I do? to be more attractive to her. He's like super insecure about his physical appearance. So he starts getting surgeries to appear more attractive and thus begins the downfall of this couple. It is insane. Nothing is ever what it seems. It completely took me by surprise, not only because the book was shocking in itself but also because i feel like extreme horror just like it just doesn't get me anymore and this one did so for that alone i commend you samantha why the past couple books why have i been like directly talking to the author hi this is my letter to you like what am i what am i doing here this is for y'all this is for the readers not the author next up we have another horror book this one is not extreme but it is night bitch by rachel yoder and i went into this with pretty low expectations i'll be totally honest i thought okay this is gonna be some pretentious bullshit this is gonna be some musings and blah 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 those books are really hit or miss for me so i went in purposely with low expectations but this completely blew me out of the water and far exceeded anything that i expected yes it is commentary heavy and it does read a little pretentious at times but it wasn't in a way that annoyed me i felt like this is the one book in that kind of lane that i can really really get on board with because I was thinking when I was reading this book you know there are some books that you just like turn off your brain and you take it in this book was not that okay my mind was going I was thinking I was thinking about myself I was thinking about women I was thinking about motherhood I was thinking about my family I was just I was thinking when I was reading this book and something thought-provoking is always going to impress me that is what horror is for for me in this book, we are following a woman who is slowly transforming into a dog, and you think it's like a werewolf situation, but it's a little bit different than that. And we follow just kind of like a plotless character study of this woman turning into a dog and all the ways that it affects her and how she can kind of get in touch with different sides of herself that are different from just like the mother and wife and woman role. It is so thought provoking. The character development is so interesting. The horror is really psychological and social rather than like things that go bump in the night. And I really appreciated that. Again, that's not something that I would like say that I normally go for or normally love. I think actually a lot of times that kind of stuff either doesn't really connect with me or goes over my head, but this was just really effective. Something 
something about it really stands out to me and I loved it. Next up, we have a recent read that I haven't talked about on my channel at all yet, and that is my first Darcy Coates book, Dead of Winter. I have only heard like really negative reviews of Darcy Coates books. Like I know there are people out there that like her, but all the reviews that I hear are like, it was slow, it was haunted, it was paranormal, and that is just like not my thing. So I went in, again, with low expectations, thinking this was gonna be slow and boring and ghosty, and that just was not the case. This book is so good. It is part survival horror, part Agatha Christie, people getting picked off one by one by one murder mystery. Oh my god so good. We're following this cabin full of people that were on their way to this luxurious ski lodge, but their bus crashes and gets stuck in a snowstorm on the way there. So they all have to survive in this like treacherous snowy side of a mountain. And to make it even worse, people are getting picked off one by one by one. So is there a killer on the side of the mountain or is it one of them? And the thing that stood out to me about this book is just how cleverly written it is. The plotting is airtight. There are no plot holes at all. It is so fast paced and interesting. It's just creative. Like every time I turned around thinking, okay, this is gonna start dragging in between murders now. No, there was something new to think about, something new to be horrified by. I see what differentiates Darcy Coates books from thrillers and I totally see why this is more horror than thriller because there was a lot of just like deeply disturbing horrifying imagery in here that did something beyond your typical murder mystery plot. Also, the survival horror lended itself to that as well. Overall, I was just completely blown away. I did not think that a Darcy Coates book would have me in a chokehold like this one did, but it far exceeded my expectations and I was very happily surprised by it. If you're looking for a wintry read for these next couple months or something to read during Christmas if it's snowing outside and you're a horror lover, I highly recommend this one. And the last book I have here to round out my top 12 most surprising books of 2023 is The Quiet Tenant by Clenance McCallan. And this was actually one of my book club picks for 2023. I'm very happy that I was so surprised by this pick. But when it was first voted on, I was kind of like, guys, come on. That was the throwaway pick on the poll. Like, come on. I know, I'm, maybe you're not supposed to say that, but like, sometimes I can't really think of like four books that I would really want to read in a month, and there's always just like a throwaway pick on the poll. And I know y'all know that. The people on my Patreon, I know y'all know that. Sometimes there's a pick that gets like 1% of the vote two percent of the vote. And I'm like, yeah, that makes sense, because that was the throwaway pick. This for me was a throwaway pick. But for some reason, everybody wanted to read it. And so I was like, y'all, Come on, this is like nothing thriller. What is going on here? The, the, the cover was giving me nothing. The, the fucking, the title, come on, The Quiet Tenant? What does that even mean? I'm supposed to be thrilled by a silent person living in a house? Like what's going on? But this book was so much more than a boring cover and a boring title. It was actually so unique. My like gripe with thrillers this year is they were all just so one note, so basic, so something I've seen before. And this was not that. It was totally unique and it sucked me in from the first page. We are following a guy who is your typical serial killer, kidnapper, locking women in the basement type of vibe, but things are a little bit different when his wife dies and he has to move house because he was living in a house that his wife's parents owned and um, now they're like cutting ties now that she's dead. So he has to move not only with the girl that he has kidnapped, but also with his teenage daughter. And he has to find a way to explain to his teenage daughter why there's a random woman coming to live with them in their new house. And the ways that this is done, the delusion in this book, oh my God, it is so crazy. It is so dramatic. It is so scandalous. I loved every second of this book. I could not believe it as I was reading it. It was so shocking. And the perspectives that are chosen to follow in this book are masterful. We do not follow that creepy ass serial killer man's POV. We follow people that actually give us a ton of insight. We follow the women in this man's life. 
It had really good commentary, but it didn't take away from the like fun, thrilling atmosphere at all. It felt really high stakes. It felt really emotional because you're seeing this girl basically go through the most traumatic thing that you can go through and she's losing her identity and you're rooting for her to escape, but she's squandering all these opportunities. Oh my God. It's like watching a horror movie and yelling at someone to run to the car and they just keep fumbling the keys. Like it's that kind of thrilling. And that's just not a feeling that I get with a lot of new release thrillers lately. Like I keep saying it, but 2023 was the year of the flop of the thriller. Like so many thrillers this year sucked so bad. And so I was so happily surprised to read one that just blew me away. And with that, those are all of my most surprising books of 2023. If you underestimated any of these like I did, I hope you give it a second thought and maybe another try. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. Let me know down below if you're going to check out any of these books and let me know down below if you got your merch or you're gonna get your merch and we can match. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Don't forget to go to therapy and read a book this week and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!